Hi guys, Steve the Transit Camper, welcome to the channel. This video is for the June challenge set by Dick in the Dirt. Let's have a listen to Dick. Number one. You have to complete an overnight stealth camp. It has to be a stealth camp. No campground or anything like that. It must be a stealth camp. Number two. Obviously, uh, your video has to contain the history of the uh, location that you chose for your stealth camp, of course. Number three. Your video description has to have the hashtags Stealth Camping Alliance and SCA June History Challenge. The videos are much easier to find that way. Number four. Your video must be premiere, it must be premiered, and it must be premiered either on June 30th, July 1st, or July 2nd. It's the last weekend, technically, of June. And that's it. You have to follow those four simple rules in order to be considered to be nominated for the top five. So we are heading off to a site very close to home in Shrewsbury. The first road that we're going to go along is called Featherbed Lane. And I now know the history of Featherbed Lane and why it was called that. And so will you at the end of this video. We're on it now. Now this site where we are going to stealth camp overnight is very historic. It was the place where a battle took place tell you all about that when we get there but it is also known for something else and I'll let you know what that is shortly we've got cat the dog in the back she's gonna enjoy a nice walk and babies alongside we are only one day back from Ibiza we're absolutely shattered really but we thought we're both off work let's go and get the June challenge done for Dick in the Dirt and the Stealth Carpen Alliance. We're just gonna head through these big set of traffic lights. Now I absolutely hate these traffic lights. It's a four way job, it should be an island, but because Shrewsbury Council are too lazy to put an island in, you have to sit here for hours and spend half your life waiting for that green light. Does my head in, doesn't it, baby? Mm -hmm. And I say it every time. So we are just passing the Harry Hotspur pub. If anybody knows their English history, they might know who Harry Hotspur is. Right, we are now coming up to this very famous place, as I said. Cat the dog is gonna enjoy a lovely walk and it's not somewhere that I've walked around. Dick in the Dirt suggested we needed to do something historic, I thought I'll try and do somewhere that's local to me that I don't know anything about and I'll try and give you what little bit of history I've read about the place and we'll be doing a stealth van camp for this one.
So we have arrived at the location. We're gonna jump out, take Cat the dog for a walk and have a look at what information we can gather around us. A few people just leaving, a few cars over there. And there's a car there. Here she is, Cat the dog, all excited, ready for a walk. Really, really windy today, which is a bit annoying. So there's gonna be a bit of wind noise, I'm afraid. But we're heading up onto this site. And the first thing we've seen straight away is some information. Let's have a look at it. Well, straight away, people, I've got to say, that is a poor performance from Shropshire Council. Tells you nothing. I didn't want to directly film them, but there's some boy racers use this car park at night. And also something else goes on here, which you can guess. Well, we've been met with these steps, so we're going to go straight up there. Cat's off the lead. She's free! She just shouted. I'm free! And there's a well-placed bench right at the top of these steps. We're not going to need it. Oh, Cat's going to have a look though. Do you need the bench, Cat? No, not for that, Cat. There's a bit more of a clue of what went on here in 1403. And before you know it, the step's going down. I don't think there's much history behind that. Some great places for a stealth camp, which me and baby are gonna do at some point up here. Straight away in there, you wouldn't get seen in there. And it was a good entry site too. Just looking, because this is a well-trodden path. Lots of people use this and look at that. You could just get in there. That would be amazing. Awesome. There's baby. Through this avenue of trees, wonderful. All of this will become much more overgrown in the summer. There's a nice flat land there. You could get the Dutch army tent up in there, no problem. Well, we've just come down this path and there's a van that looks identical to ours just there. <laughs> Baby pointed it out. As I say, we don't really know our whereabouts here, but we'll go through here. And it looks as though this just leads to the main road. So we're going to have to watch Cat here. Oh, actually, no, it's another path. Hmm, dodgy. If I was on my own, I would not go through there. Cat's been graffitiing. Cat's been graffitiing? Yeah. What's she written? Have a look. Let's have a look, baby reckons Cat's written something. <gasps> She's written her own name there. Hey, naughty are you, Cat? Not a big fan of graffiti. Some people say, oh, tags are ace, they're not. They're messy, and it's vandalism. Don't like any of it. Bit of rubbish left over there, look. We're gonna find somewhere to sit. Oh, look at all these stealth locations in here. Look at this woods, it's amazing. 100% there are places here, 100%. Spooky forest though. There's a beautiful bit of nature, just creeps in there, beautiful pond. Can't see any wildlife. So in 1403, King Henry IV fought against Harry Hotspur and his rebels at this site in Shrewsbury called Battlefield. The Featherbed Lane is where the soldiers slept the night before the battle. They laid down feathers in the lane and that was their Featherbed Lane. And in the morning, they went to war. The reason for that war was that Harry Hotspur had fought alongside the King, the Lancastrian King, and the Lancastrian King 
promised him wealth at the end of the war, supporting him against Scotland and Wales. And of course, at the end of the war, he gave buildings and money to other forces that helped him, but he didn't give Harry Hotspur anything. So Harry Hotspur's rebel army went up against Henry IV in 1403 at Battlefield Chewsbury. I'll tell you what the outcome was. After the battle, there were 1,847 rebels killed. And as they looked for more corpses on the way to and from the battle, they found another 3,000 bodies from the rebel army. So Harry Hotspur obviously lost. So, I'm gonna have a little bit of a read. I'll tell you a bit more shortly because I wanna know what happened to Harry Hotspur. He's got a pub named after him. So, he must have survived, surely. So, we'll go back to these benches. We'll have a sit down. We'll have a read. Don't forget, this is part of the June challenge for the Stealth Camp and Alliance. Set by Dick in the Dirt. Go and have a look at Dick's channel if you get a chance. Cat's gone. We're going this way. Are we, baby? Yeah. There she is. <laughs> right, let's get on these benches. I feel like Survival Sam sat here. This is what he does, isn't it? It's a bit weird. Had to get out the ice for a while. So, Harry Hotspur. His actual name, he was a Percy, he was a member of the Percy family and it was the Percy family that supported the king in all his campaigns until he turned on him. And his actual name was Henry Percy. Crazy. So it was his nickname, Harry Hotspur. Do you think they'd have named the pub after the right name, wouldn't you? Not your nickname. If I had a pub named after me, I'd want it to be called Steve Fletcher not Fatty Bum Bum or Porky Two Chins. Wouldn't want it as my nickname. No way. I wonder what the pub would be called that Survival Sam would be named after. comments it's his birthday as well when this comes out don't forget that yeah happy birthday survival Sam so what became of Henry Percy well it does say his place of death was battlefield on the outskirts of Shrewsbury and he died on the day of the battle so at least he went down fighting with his men Admirable. Said that without stuttering, did you notice? No comment. I just noticed as well that poor old Harry Hotspur was only 38 when he was killed in battle. That's really sad. 
reading a bit more history, it was actually a time when the longbow proved to be really effective against the rebels and they put the whole battle wind down to be in the longbow where they didn't have to get close quarters with the enemy. They could just get them at long range and kill the army before they even got to doing hands-on stuff, which is absolutely amazing. I was trying to find a connection with that uh, thing that we found there, but uh, it doesn't explain that sign, that metal sign doesn't explain anything and I can't find anything on Google. It does look like a long arrow, maybe. Is it to do with the longbow? I don't know. Baby noticed there was a sign on there, but of course it's been removed by some mindless hooligans, probably. Cat, what are you doing? You're ruining the shot. Unbelievable. Well, this next bit has really shocked me and I'm gonna to have to put my glasses on because, listen to this. Harry Percy, otherwise known as Harry Hotspur, was buried with honours, but it soon spread that he wasn't really dead. In response to this, the king had him disinterred. His body was salted, set up in Shrewsbury, impaled on a spear between two millstones in the marketplace pillory with an armed guard. And it was later quartered and put on display in Chester in London. I think that's fairly substantial evidence that somebody's passed away. His head was sent to York and impaled on the North Gate, looking towards his own lands. In November, his grisly remains were returned to his widow, Elizabeth. I assume they put him in a nice box or something. Unbelievable, isn't it? That's history. We knew nothing about this and it's thanks to Dick in the Dirt that we've made the effort and come here and tried to read up a bit of our own history. I'll have a quick look and see if there's anything else interesting. It does say there that Battlefield Church was built over the mass burial site of where the soldiers were all buried, all the victims of the war, so we don't know where that church is. But what I will do is fly the drone over. I won't be able to do that tonight, but it'll be in the video. And we'll just have a bit of a sketch round. We have got that uh, power lines above, so we've got to be careful, but we, we will come out tomorrow and just fly the drone over the site and I'll try and point out some historic things. But otherwise, the second reason that you're all waiting for, why have we picked here? Because we've been told it's a dogging spot and we're gonna get the spy cameras out and see if it is. <laughs> Can't all be history and good fun. Cat knocked the camera. So we're gonna to return to the van and we are going to have something to eat because we're starving. We're not doing anything special. There'll be no squib cooking tonight. Something simple because we're hungry. Uh, baby hasn't been very well the last few days, really, to be honest. So we're taking it easy and we'll be able to watch the CCTV cameras tonight. I know there will be a lot of traffic around, but whether it's dog in traffic, I wouldn't have thought so. But you never know. <coughs> we'll keep you posted. Good girl. Cat's waiting to have her lead put on like a good girl. A few cars about, like I said. This place doesn't shut. There's no gate comes across, and if it does, we'll come out in the morning. We don't care. Lock us in. Mostly dog walkers, really. So we're just looking at this terrible map. That is where we are, the car park, and that would be the church. I would imagine St. Mary Magdalene's church, because we can't see another church there, can we? So all of this area you would class as battlefield. I'll try and put some pictures on of something over some music. people in the car park we've got to be careful here getting in the back of the van we need to wait for that guy 
by the side of his car to go. And then we'll jump in. We're still waiting. Oh, actually, the door's this side. What am I talking about? We can just get in. God. I worry myself sometimes. So there is that white car just there behind me. And there are two lads in there. So I'm just sort of standing up the side of the van, pretending to be fettling about with a few things. And when I think they're not looking, I'll just jump in and shut the door. And before you know it, I've disappeared. That'll do for me. Baby's in. And once we're in, the confidence just builds. <laughs> for me anyway. So, what supplies have we brought? Tomato sauce. Juice. A tin of chilli. My favourite, lovely white baps. Angel delight for pudding. Slimy suckers. Grated cheese. Half a pint of milk. Some sexy bacon. Butter. Some long grain rice. Milk for coffees in the morning. Cheeky treat for cat. One shallot. One whisk. Now that's tiny. There's a theme, isn't there? Guess whose it is. It's not mine. It's baby. Spare slimy sucker. Liquid for a vape. That must be baby's. That's the end of that. What did you say a minute ago? You're not going to say it, are you? Right, I put this on my head to end that last clip. I thought it was funny. She said, perfect size hat for your head. What have you got to say for yourself? No comment. Even cats going. Unbelievable. Baby's on chopping. And I'll do the cooking. I was given the job to put some things away so everything was safe to do the cooking. So I thought, let's put it all in there. But little did I know, the cups rolled. And we've had a bit of a disaster. I'll take the hit. Well, at least two survived. Two died. Ta-da! I've done the big clean-up. Baby's doing some chopping. Right, let's get the stealth cameras on. So we can see if anything goes on. Baby can shake me and I can run over. So what have we got so far? Nothing really exciting yet. Baby's done some chopping. Cat's already had a drink. She's getting an early doors treat stick by the look of it. Oh no. Took her a while to decide that that was edible, but she's not that excited by it because she knows she gets better usually in the van. Oh. She's going to wait to see what we're having first. Yeah, she'll wait and see what we're having, you're right. We're going to warm off that rice. It is already cooked. We've got this brand new saucepan that baby bought, which is immaculate, and it fits our hob perfectly. Every time we light this, we say to ourselves, when are we going to run out? It's been in here forever, this bottle of gas. 
onions going in with the rice. And we've put that on a very low heat with a little bit of olive oil and the onions, as I said. Baby is already whipping my pudding, or our pudding. And the chilli's in the pan ready to go. Mm, I spy a pile of cheese and a good girl. No, cat. You said good girl. Yeah, but go on, then. it wasn't really the command. But she was being good, you're right. Dogs love cheese, especially our cat. And look how slim she is before anybody moans. She's the perfect example of the breed. It's all coming together. Baby's on TikTok. The rice is just about done. I put that lid on it just to keep it moist. Keep it moist. We've had this bubbling a few minutes ago. But let's just warm that through and then we're ready to serve. Nothing much has happened on the cameras yet, but we will keep recording them intermittently. There's only about four cars on the car park at the moment. Baby's asked for the plates. I will also... You just going with a spoon, baby? Yeah, don't mind. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Just get this bubbling. And we'll be there. Baby assures me that the Angel Delight, do they have that in America? Is ready to go. That's bubbling, that's good enough for me. We're serving. Can't find cat. She's buried her horse in the Ah, look, there she is. What a gorgeous girl. Settling in for the night. <laughs> Rice is served. I've allocated baby the task to dish the chilli up because I get greedy, I can't help myself. Oh, a bit of cheese on top, superb. Lovely. It used to be the case that this was a really cheap meal. You could just go to the supermarket and buy tins. It's now really expensive. So simple and so delicious. I love it. Me and the boy eat this all the time. Lovely. Washing up all done. And baby's invited me for pudding. Woohoo! It's a sharer. Woohoo! Oh, it takes me back to being a kid, this. Beautiful. <laughs> it's not for you, cat. It's too nice for dogs. Go with a bit quick, aren't you? And your spoons are double mine. Need to calm down. It's sharing. I've had my first warning. Going with half spoons now. It's like torture. Went, ooh. Are you pocketing? <laughs> I'm pouching. Oh, it's really nice, it's really good. <laughs> really, really good. You can have the rest. 
gonna give Kat some. I broke every rule in the book. She's using my spoon. Every rule in the book and look. Not interested, were you? Look at that, you put it on something else and she'll eat it. It's because the spoon would make a noise and rattle around and she doesn't like noises like that. Lapping it up now. Beautiful tidy kitchen ready for the morning. You may have noticed I've also got a Vimto as well. Because since the holidays we've decided to give our livers a bit of a break. So this is genuinely just squash. Thanks once again to Dick in the Dirt for setting this challenge. I hope I meet the requirements. We are doing a stealth camp. We will be using those hashtags. And we are parked right by this historic site. And uh, you never know, we may even get a bit of history of our own involved. <coughs> Let's see what the night brings. We are currently watching a white van that's pulled up alongside us. Well, about sort of four spaces away. He virtually reversed into the field. Sat there. And we're watching him. Nobody gets out. And then all of a sudden, he's slowly driven off. That was a strange one, wasn't it, baby? Hmm, we get some weirdos around here. <laughs> not that we're not weird, really. That was a strange one. Let me show you. of noisy teenagers walking past. I don't think they mean any harm, but they're certainly chatting away there. I've got no external mics on the CCTV, so you don't get to hear them. So, so far, none of the action that we uh, were promised. <laughs> Only Van's action. Nothing's materialised as yet. Does it happen after dark? I don't know. We're sticking around for the night anyway. Well, the car park is completely empty. Just as I say that, a car pulls up. You can't believe it. gone into a parking spot, the lights off. It doesn't matter where you aim these cameras, you can never get the target in the middle of the screen. Just parked up with the lights off. Ten minutes, and then it went. Mm, couldn't see who's inside. This is interesting, two cars have pulled up, one to the side of another, headlights on full beam, nobody's got out yet, it's all a bit weird. 
sat there with bright lights on. Came in hot too, I might add. He's lighting up the whole of the car park with them headlights. And the one car has left. Leaves the other one there in darkness. Not seen anybody get out or anything. So the last hour has been quiet, so I'm going to get myself to sleep. I'll come back to you if anything happens. Good night. Good morning. Literally just woke up. 5.44. I must have fell asleep straight away when I decided it was bedtime. Just waiting for the cameras to demiss themselves. I've just switched on. Can't hear anybody about. I think the car park's empty. Baby's still asleep? No. <clears throat> no, she's not. Cat is definitely still asleep. Can't hear her moving. She normally wakes up pretty quick. It is getting light outside, so I'm going to see you in a bit. As I said, these cameras do miss themselves. We've been on a boat. It's been switched on about a minute, I would say now. And they're clearing. So now a couple of the screens have demisted. I can see there is one car on the car park. That'll be an early morning dog walker. There you go. They have just left. So we are now officially on our own in the car park. So all the cameras I've cleared now. It has taken a good 20 minutes though. I just put the heater on for just for five minutes. Ignore the time on that heater. I can't be bothered to set it every time I get in the van. Because it uses quite a lot of power if you leave it on. This is the actual time, 6.11. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm using kerosene in my diesel heater. I'm not adding in any oil. There is strong rumour that you need to add a bit of oil for to lubricate the pump. I haven't bothered with that. I just use neat kerosene, which is otherwise known as household diesel. It's a third of the price. Use that. Mine's been fine on it. I think my shoes may melt there. I need to get up and move them. There she is. She's not getting up yet. Oh, hello, you. Hello, gorgeous. Are you warm? I've put the heater on for you. Good morning. Well, I am officially up. Another car has just rolled onto the car park. And I am going to take cabin fever out for a quick walk. And then I'm going to come back and make that's both a coffee. Baby's just woke up. Good morning, baby. Morning. <laughs> right, let's get out there. I knew you were finding your way out. You ready for a morning wee, cat? No. 
Yeah, she is. All right, let's get you sorted. Come on then, girl, let's go and have a look. All right. She's gone trotting off. Look at that beautiful sunset. Just the one van, probably a stealth camper. No, it's not, they've only just arrived. This way, cat. Cat, come on. Why is she heading straight to the main road? Cat, this way. Cat, come on. I wasn't there last night. It's so messy, aren't they? Why would you do that? Could be the birds, I suppose, to be fair. We'll go to the top of the steps. Give baby time to get up. I have to say thanks once again to Dick in the Dirt for setting up this challenge, this June challenge for the Stealth Camping Alliance. Really enjoyed this one and I've learnt a bit. Anybody whose nickname was named after a pub, congratulations. You made it into my thought process. <laughs> Come on then, cat. Let's get back. Loves her morning walks, that girl. Come on. Come on. Straight into the bushes. I'll leave her to do it. Come on, cat. Come on. Always goes the opposite way. Come on, you wouldn't do this with mum. Oh, leave her there. Soon bottles it when you walk away. Knows where her bread's buttered. And it ain't in the middle of those woods. She's straight back on the bed and she will go straight back to bed. Won't you, girl? Kettle's on. Move the butter in closer to the kettle to warm that off, ready to spread some butter on our baps. It's bacon and slimy suckers this morning. She knows what's coming. Slimy suckers are on. I'll give these a stir and baby can have her coffee. Wonderful, let's get the bacon on. Just a couple of cars here now. Breakfast is nearly done, but Cat wanted to go out again. This is a great tip, by the way. My hobbies over the years said, before you pick a car park, get on Google Earth and have a look if there's any donut skid marks in the car park. And that might tell you if any boy racers come there at night. And he's dead right. Well done, Matt. My hobbies over the years. And that is breakfast. Bacon and slimy suckers. Definitely one of our favorite breakfasts, this. Mm. Right, I'm gonna get this eaten. 
all washed up. Cat has had her piece of bacon. I just ripped it and gave it to her like that because we haven't brought her a second bowl and she wanted some water. Enjoy that, cat. Yes, I did. Thanks, Dad. Right, we are pretty much all done for this one. We're going to jump in the front and then we'll say goodbye from there. But while I remember, I want to say, go and have a look at Dick in the Dirt. He set this month's challenge for June and we really appreciate it. All about a bit of history. And I've learnt loads today myself. So we'll see you in the front and then we'll say goodbye. There's the famous keys. Thank you, Boone. Okay, so that's it from me and baby, Steve the Transit Camper. Thanks for watching the June Challenge. You take care. Bye.